Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Killer Instinct. If you're new here, hi, my name is Savannah and I am your host of Killer Instinct. Before we get started, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that way you never miss an episode. We post weekly on the podcast every Wednesday, as well as every Wednesday for the video version on YouTube as well, and you are not going to want to miss it. As you can tell by the title, we are diving into a case that is very recent. You may or may not have been keeping up with this case in the media, and it is also one of the most wickedly disturbing cases that we have covered here in a while, and that would be the brutal murder of Shad Therian. Now, while you may not be familiar with Shad's name, you may be familiar with his murderer's name because his murderer's name has been plastered all over the media way more than his has, and his murderer goes by the name of Taylor Shabiznis. Like I mentioned, this is a brutal case today, and I do want to give a disclaimer. We are going to be diving into some pretty intense topics, dismemberment, mutilation, sexual assault, things of that nature, so if that is not something that you feel like you you want to listen to today, I completely understand, and I will see you in the next one. But with that being said, if you're up for it, let's jump right on into it today. Shad was born on September 7th, 1998 in Green Bay, Wisconsin to his parents, Tara and Michael. Shad had lots of hobbies. He enjoyed camping, playing board games, he enjoyed wood carving, and he was also very interested and passionate about music. Shad was described as someone who was always putting others before himself, and he also worked alongside his father and his grandfather in their family business. So we are going to jump to February 23rd, 2022. Now on this day at approximately 3.25 a.m., so in the very early morning hours, the Green Bay Police Department received a phone call from Shad's mother after she had discovered her son's decapitated head in a bucket in the basement of their home. Now, when police arrived to Tara's house, she escorted them down into the basement where they saw a bucket, a green bucket with a beach towel placed over it. The bucket was placed at the bottom of the stairs when you go into the basement. And when police removed the towel, they were able to confirm that Shad's head was in fact in the bucket. Now, when the police first looked at the head inside of the bucket, they could tell that there was evidence of strangulation. Along with that, inside of the bucket, right next to Shad's head, was his mutilated genitals in the bucket as well. Now, Shad lived at home with his mom, so the basement was considered his room. There was a mattress down there. It very much wasn't used for storage purposes. It was used as Shad's room, and the room itself was an absolute disaster. There were things scattered throughout the room. There was blood soaked all through the mattress, all on the pillowcase. All throughout that basement was blood. There was blood on the walls, on the ceiling. And along with the blood, police also discovered Shad's body parts inside of plastic shopping bags scattered throughout the basement as well. They also found multiple knives scattered around the basement as well that they could tell were used in the dismemberment of Shad. Now, I know I just jumped into all of that. So I know you might be sitting there wondering, how the heck did this happen? So let's talk about it. According to Tara, Shad's mother, she claimed that she last saw Shad two days prior on February 21st and that he left the home that night at approximately 9.30 when his friend, Taylor Shabiznis, came and picked him up. Tara stated that several hours later, Shad and Taylor returned back to the home and went immediately down into the basement together. Tara said that they both remained in the basement all throughout the night and all throughout the 22nd of February as well. And according to Tara, she claimed that it wasn't uncommon for him to spend extended periods of time or a day or two in the basement. So she wasn't worried. And it wasn't until the early morning hours of the 23rd at approximately somewhere between 2.30 a.m. and 3.30 a.m. that Tara stated that she heard the basement door slam 
shut. And right after the door was shut, Tara also heard Taylor getting in her car and driving away. Now, after Taylor drove off, Tara said she got up and walked towards the basement because she wanted to see if Shad had gone off with Taylor again or if he was still at home. She said that when she was walking towards the basement, she was able to see that there was still a light on in the basement. She claimed that she walked down the stairs into the basement and and while she didn't see Taylor nor Shad, she did notice a bucket with a beach towel on it. And it was at that point that Tara removed the beach towel and discovered her own son's decapitated head inside of the bucket. Now, immediately, Tara began to be frantic, hysterical, exactly as you would think one would be finding their child's decapitated head in a bucket. And she ran to Shad's stepfather, who was still asleep in the bed, telling him about what she found. Shad's stepfather couldn't believe what he was hearing. He almost thought that Tara was making it up, that Tara was seeing things that she didn't actually see. However, Tara insisted that he needed to get up and also see what she was seeing. And when he did, he was able to agree and confirm that that in fact was Shad's head in the bucket. And it wasn't as if he didn't want to believe Tara in the moment. It was more so, it was 3.30 in the morning, everything was a daze and Tara just seemed absolutely frantic. And it took him a second to really understand and analyze the situation. Now, after an autopsy was conducted, it was determined that Shad had cocaine, meth, and marijuana in his system. However, the drugs were not the cause of his death. The official cause of death for Shad was strangulation in the manner of homicide. The medical examiner also noted that there were multiple stab wounds all over Shad's body, in addition to the decapitation. The medical examiner claimed that the stab wounds were so severe that it had appeared that someone had attempted to remove Shad's flesh from his bones and completely skin his entire body. At the crime scene, there were dog collars found in the basement, and the medical examiner found injuries on Shad's neck that were consistent with those dog collars. So that's the crime scene. That's the autopsy. That is what happened the day of. But you might be sitting here wondering, who the heck is this girl? Who is Taylor Shabiznes? And now we're going to talk about it. Taylor Shabiznes was originally born Taylor Coronado and was born on November 23rd, 1997 in Chicago to her parents, Arturo and Marla. And Taylor also had a brother. Now, when Taylor was in the fourth grade, her and her family moved to Wisconsin, where she remained until her senior year of high school. Taylor actually ended up getting expelled her senior year of high school after she was found being responsible for fighting with another student physically. And after the expulsion is when she moved to Texas and moved in with her paternal grandparents and finished out the remainder of her high school career. Now, unfortunately, and very sadly, in 2009, Taylor's mom, Marla, passed away in her sleep from cirrhosis of the liver, which was a result of her alcoholism. And after this, Taylor had a very tough journey with her mental health, as you can imagine. Taylor was in the seventh grade when her father caught her in the middle of a suicide attempt when he walked into Taylor holding a steak knife to her throat. And it was after the suicide attempt that Taylor began seeing different psychiatrists and tried to get on the right track with her mental health. Now, at the time, the psychiatrists diagnosed her with ADD as well as bipolar disorder. So Taylor was put on mood stabilizers and antidepressants as well as an antipsychotic medication that she remained on until she was 18 years old. Old. So that was her mental health journey. However, Taylor's upbringing as a whole definitely came with its own set of struggles. Like I mentioned, her mom passed away in 2009. And then in 2018, her father was actually convicted of second degree sexual assault of a child under the age of 16 and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. Then just last year in 2022, Taylor's brother Arturo, also known as AJ, was also killed in a motorcycle accident. Now, AJ's death was after Shad's murder, 
but that's still her mother and her brother that have passed away and her father is in jail for over a decade for second degree sexual assault. And not saying that any of this gives Taylor the slightest bit of a pass for what she did because it absolutely does not. However, it is an unfortunate situation for the entire family as a whole. Now, when it comes to breaking the law, Taylor is also no stranger to that. In 2020, a criminal complaint was filed against her and she was charged with a battery on a police officer and resisting arrest after the cops found her behaving strangely and knocking on people's doors throughout a neighborhood. When police approached her, they were able to see that she was clearly under the influence of drugs, which was not a fact that Taylor hid from the police either. When Taylor was approached by the police in this instance, she had told them that she just shot up quote unquote, and showed the marks on her arms. And when police tried to stop Taylor from walking into oncoming traffic, Taylor allegedly kicked at one of the police officers, which resulted in her arrest. Now, in 2017 is when Taylor met a man named Warren Shabiznes, and his real name is Warren Chabot, and it is unclear why he changed his name or what the Shabiznes name is all about. However, he changed his name to Shabiznes, and therefore, when they got married, Taylor also changed her name to Taylor Shabiznes. Now, Warren and Taylor do have a son together, and shortly after their son was born, Warren also ended up getting arrested because he was accused of being a meth dealer. He pled guilty to a possession with intent to deliver charge and was sentenced to 28 months and is planning on being out in January 2024. Now, it's unclear what the relationship status was between Warren and Taylor when he went to prison. However, Taylor did post some pretty cryptic Facebook posts shortly after Warren was was incarcerated. In January 2022, she posted, quote, I got hitched to show them my commitment, loyalty, and dedication to them, that I was never going to be how I used to be. Then they turn around and fuck on me. There is no way I'll ever go into another relationship. Hashtag can't trust no one, end quote. That same month, Taylor also posted, quote, double-crossed my loyalty. That's one thing you'll never get back. Let's play, end quote. Now, again, it is unclear who exactly Taylor was pointing these messages towards. However, it is interesting that these messages were posted around the same time that Warren pled guilty. But again, it is unclear what Warren and Taylor's level of commitment was to each other while he was in prison, because clearly she wasn't remaining completely loyal to him, which we will get into in a second. When every person, moment, and penny counts in your business, you cannot afford to take any of them for granted. Stamps.com gets it because for the last 25 years, they've been helping businesses like yours save time and money. So you can focus on your business knowing Stamps.com has all your postage needs covered with premium discounts and great rates. With Stamps.com, all you need is a computer and a printer. They even send you a free scale so you'll have everything you need to get started. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your stamps.com dashboard and if you sell products online stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart running a business is not cheap especially when it comes to fulfilling orders for your customers but luckily stamps.com has a huge carrier discounts like up to 84 percent off usps and ups rates For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Set your business up for success when you get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code KILLER for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code KILLER. On February 21st, 2022, at approximately 9.30 p.m. is when Shad got picked up from his mother's house where he lived by Taylor. When Shad got into Taylor's car, the two of them drove over to their friend Scott's apartment. Scott was a mutual friend of Shad and Taylor, and together the three of them began doing drugs together, specifically meth. 
Now on this specific night, Taylor did admit that she was doing meth along with injecting herself with an antidepressant called trazodone. So it's safe to say that everyone was engaging in hardcore drugs. Now after everyone had gotten high together, Shad and Taylor left Scott's apartment and went back to Shad's mom's house. Now Taylor claimed that she did want to pick up cocaine on her way back. However, she was unable to find any. So lo and behold, they went back to Shad's. Now, when the two of them arrived back to Shad's mom's house, they went straight down to the basement, and that is when the two of them began engaging in sexual acts. And obviously, as we know, these acts resulted in Shad being strangled to death and then brutally dismembered. Now, luckily, Shad's mother was able to name who her son was with this night. She was able to tell police that Shad was with Taylor. And when police went to go arrest Taylor, Taylor actually already had an arrest warrant out for her for the obstructing a police officer charge. So it really is unclear why she was not in jail at this time because she was sentenced to three months starting in January, 2022. So based off of that math, she should have been in jail at this time. So it's unclear whether or not she was on house arrest or what the details of this really were. However, when Taylor was approached by police on the early morning hours of February 23rd, police had asked her if she knew why they were there, if she knew why she was being arrested. And when Taylor was asked this question, she said that she thought that they were there for the arrest warrant for the assaulting a police officer charge. She never mentioned anything about Shad. So after Taylor gets arrested, police bring her down to the station for an interrogation. And we are now going to talk about some of the very gruesome details of what Taylor stated happened on the night of February 21st. And I'm going to play some clips from the interrogation that you will be able to hear. I do want to mention that the quality, the audio quality of these clips more specifically is not up to par with how I would like it to be. Taylor at the time was wearing a yellow jumpsuit that created a lot of noise. It was like a plasticky jumpsuit at the time. And because she was moving around a lot, it really muffles a lot of what she says. And along with that, the audio quality just isn't very good in general, which is interesting because these interrogations you would think would have the top notch, utmost, best video and audio quality because they do get played in courts and are very crucial to a lot of these investigations. However, just so you know, if you're wondering why it doesn't sound super crystal clear, that is why. But I'm also going to give you a description of what is really going on in these clips, so you will have an idea. Now, as I've mentioned multiple times now, what we know from that night is that Shad and Taylor went to their friend Scott's apartment, came back to Shad's house, went into the basement, and that is when everything began to happen. So I am going to play that clip from the interrogation right now of Taylor explaining sort of the timeline of what happened in the lead up to the murder. I don't even know anymore. Like, uh, it, was, uh, it was weird. I was riding him like a donkey, okay? And then, like, I, I think so. I think that's what was happening. Like, like, falling and then, like, I don't know. Were, um, you two being intimate, having sex? It was getting there. It was getting there, okay. So would this be considered foreplay? Yeah. Yeah, it was. And then, um, I don't know. And then, um, I just didn't stop. I don't know why. I didn't stop. You guys done something like this in the past? Not like that. Do you use manual strangulation during sex at all? The shed like that? A manual strangulation? Yes, 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 yes. Now, at first, when police informed Taylor that they discovered Shad's head inside of a bucket, her direct response was, quote, that is pretty fucked up. Now, when asked exactly what happened in the basement, at first, Taylor tried to claim that she blacked out. Shortly after claiming that she blacked out, she was actually able to recall the events. So at first she claims she doesn't know, she blacks out, didn't know what happened. However, when police ask her a second time, this is when she tells police that when her and Chad went into the basement that evening, Shad had given Taylor a metal 
collar. It was a metal chained dog collar and he had two of them. One was for himself and one was for Taylor. Now Taylor claimed that Shad himself placed the collar over his neck and laid on the bed. Now at this point is when Taylor claimed that she quote unquote went crazy and got on top of Shad and began choking him using this collar. Now, once she began strangling Shad, Taylor claimed that his face began turning purple and that he began coughing up blood. However, she didn't stop. Now, Taylor did say that Shad was trying to fight back. He was trying to pull the collar off of himself. However, he was unsuccessful as Taylor just kept pulling. Now, Taylor claimed that the choking encounter lasted between three and five minutes minutes, which quite frankly is a very long time and insinuates it was a slow and painful death. Now, when talking to the detectives, Taylor told them that she never wanted to kill Shad. She said that this was a mistake. This was never meant to happen. She shows no sign of remorse. In fact, throughout the interrogation, she was laughing throughout the entire thing. She was smiling. She was making jokes. She was saying that Shad was her buddy and that this was just not what she was expecting to happen tonight. She said that there was no real motive behind her actions. Shad did didn't make her mad. He didn't say something. This wasn't an act of self-defense. This just simply happened. Now, Taylor also told detectives that after she was able to see that Shad was in fact dead, that this is when she began, quote unquote, playing with his body for several hours. And by playing with his body, Taylor means that she conducted sexual acts on Shad. She claimed that she gave Shad oral sex. And along with that, she had a dildo that she had brought with her and she had placed it in Shad's mouth. After these acts were completed, Taylor then said that she spent some time just cuddling with Shad's body. She laid with him, she was cuddling with him, and after a few hours of that, she claimed that that was the moment that she decided that she wanted to dismember his body. Again, there was no real rhyme or reason as to why she wanted to do it or why she felt like she needed to do it. However, she just did it. And she began with Shad's head. She said, quote, that was the first thing that I took off. I wanted the head, end quote. Now, Taylor did retain small injuries from the dismemberment, like cuts and scrapes on her own hands. And she then went on to say that she was planning on taking all of Shad's body parts with her when she left, but repeatedly said throughout the interrogation that she got lazy and didn't complete the job as skillfully as she wished that she did. Taylor went as far as saying that she wanted to take Shad's head as her trophy. And I'm going to play that clip for you right now. Where's the body? The body there. Yeah. So we're going to take the head somewhere? I like that. You like that? Well, you're going to have fun in front of the girl that we're going to so they're all dismembered. Yeah. So you dismembered the body too? Yeah. <laughs> well, what did you do with the body? Oh, they're on um, there. Someone? She then goes on to talk about the weapons that she used to dismember Shad and the types of knives that she used. How did you dismember his body? Knives. With what? Knives, 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 knives. Knives? More than one knife? Where did you get those from? Kitchen. Just not by mine, and I wasn't checking. Do you want to sharp? No, no. It was alright. Bread knife works good. Bread knife? A bread knife works good, yeah. Really? I had to use one of these. It's so only like, yeah. I got lazy last night, so. Where, where would these knives be now? They're in 
their animal mm -hmm. organs and all the body parts. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Shad's body parts were spread all throughout the basement in different shopping bags and different containers, and his foot and his forearm were also discovered in Taylor's car as well. So she did end up taking some of his body parts with her when she left. Now, like I mentioned, Taylor was very animated throughout this entire interrogation. She was laughing, smiling. She was trying to make jokes with the detectives. At some point, she had asked a detective if they had ever loved anything so much that they knew that they had to kill it. And one of the most disturbing and sickening facts that I found about this case personally was the fact that Taylor said that even though she wanted to take the head with her, she also wanted Chad's mother, Tara, to be the one to discover her son's decapitated head in that bucket. Taylor spent the interrogation taunting detectives by telling them, quote, have fun trying to find all of the organs throughout the basement, end quote. When Taylor was asked by detectives when exactly she began the dismemberment process, she claimed, quote, oh, I don't know. I was sucking and cutting at the same time, end quote. Now, Taylor also claimed that it was during the dismemberment process that she realized that it was getting light outside. In the basement, there were small windows, and she could tell that the sun was rising. And along with that, in the morning of the 22nd, Shad's mother had actually let the family cat into the basement. Luckily, and I say luckily because it means that Tara didn't actually have to fully see the brutal mutilation of her son, but luckily she dropped the cat off into the basement by opening the door at the top of the stairs. And Taylor made a note during the interrogation about how she remembered thinking that it was strange that the cat was just aimlessly walking around while Shad was being mutilated and dismembered. And she also claimed that at one point she threw the cat. Now, this case did go to trial, and many of you may have seen it on social media recently because the trial happened recently, the verdict happened recently. And Taylor actually pled not guilty by reason of insanity back in September. It was September 1st of 2022. And on Valentine's Day this year, February 14th of 2023, there was a court hearing where Taylor's attorney named Quinn Jolly had requested that the trial date was pushed back. That way experts would be able to interview Taylor and see if she was competent enough to stand trial. Now, it was during this court court hearing on February 14th that Taylor actually ended up attacking Quinn Jolly and she ended up being tackled to the ground by a sheriff. So there was a big commotion on this particular day and 10 minutes following the attack, Quinn Jolly ended up removing himself from the case. He filed a motion to be removed from Taylor's case and he was replaced by a new attorney named Christopher Froelich on March 3rd. It was also in March that the judge ruled that Taylor was in fact competent enough to stand trial. Attorney Froelich requested that the judge, Judge Walsh, remove himself from the trial because Taylor's attorney was trying to argue that Judge Walsh had witnessed Taylor attack her old attorney and he felt like that was going to create a bias in his mind against what he thought about Taylor. However, the judge declined his motion. The trial began on July 24th of 2023. So like I said, it was very recent. And throughout the trial, Taylor was seen laughing, smiling, saying things under her breath, making signs with her hands. And a lot of people believe that she did this as a tactic to make herself appear unstable, to make herself appear quote unquote insane by the court's definition. That way, the whole insanity plea would be believable because a lot of people just believe that this was all an act on her part and that she's not actually insane. Now, during the trial, it was revealed that Taylor had a Jeffrey Dahmer infatuation. Police found internet searches on Taylor's computer of, quote, Jeffrey Dahmer walking into court all sexy and Jeffrey Dahmer's butt. It was also during the trial that the defense brought on a forensic psychologist named Diane Lighton, who claimed that she did not believe that Taylor was fit to stand trial because she believed that Taylor did not fully understand the consequences of her actions. She claimed that she had met with Taylor on multiple occasions and in one of their meetings, that Taylor claimed that she had a romantic relationship with Jeffrey Dahmer, 
And on another occasion, she claimed that Taylor actually threw a chair at Diane. Diane's conclusion was that she believed that Taylor was suffering from something called command hallucinations, which in turn could cause herself to harm others or herself. So that was the defense's argument. That was what they were trying to state, that Taylor was unstable. She didn't know the consequences of her actions. She didn't know what she was doing was wrong. And this trial was very short. It lasted about two days before Taylor was convicted of first degree intentional homicide, mutilation of a corpse, and third degree sexual assault. And her whole insanity plea went out the window. Now, as far as the trial goes, there were many people in Taylor's life who testified. Taylor's father testified, her friends testified, Shad's mother testified, the forensic examiner, medical examiner, detectives, first responders, they all testified. And those clips are available online for you to go watch if you would like. You can go Google them or watch them on YouTube. All of the clips are there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I spoke about Taylor's husband, Warren, and not really understanding what the dynamic between them was once he was in prison. However, he is standing by Taylor's side through and through. Uh, Warren actually wrote a letter to one of his friends and had asked this friend to post this letter on Facebook of what his thoughts about this case are. And I'm going to read you what he said because I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say about it. Now he said, quote, my wife might be locked up for a long time, if not life. But what the world slash community don't understand is my release date is soon. Either way, my prayers go out to my wife, Taylor Shabiznes. She needs help mentally. Brown County Jail and the Brown County Circuit Courts are failing at understanding this, nor do they even care. Yes, what she is being accused of is serious, but this doesn't change the fact that she still has rights and she still has family slash people that love her no matter what her situation might be. Hopefully soon, the courts slash jail will realize that she needs help. People like to be nosy. I get that. People judge. I get that too. It's what this world does and will continue to do. Either way, I stand behind my wife and I will forever stand behind her. I know what she's being accused of is not who she is. Not only has her addiction played a big role, but so does her mental background as well as postpartum depression. I just want my wife to get help professional help because it's what she deserves. Like I said, my prayers go out to my wife. I love her more than anything in this world and that will never change no matter what, end quote. Now that post is on Warren's Facebook page. So if you want to go check it out, you definitely can. And you will see the countless comments from others telling Warren that the prayers should actually be going to Shad's mother, to Shad's family, and that he very much is making light out of the situation. Because just from looking at a message like that, you would think that Taylor was, you know, caught with petty theft or something very minuscule in comparison to what she is actually being charged with. Taylor has confessed to what she has done and her sentencing is in about a month, a little over a month. It's in September of 2023. So we will be able to see what sentence she receives very shortly. But that, you guys, is the case of Shad and the case of Taylor, Shabiznes. So I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say about it. With that being said, you guys, that is all for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Killer Instinct. Again, if you're new here, hi, my name is Savannah and I'm your host of Killer Instinct. Like I mentioned earlier, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you never miss an episode. We post weekly on the podcast every Wednesday. You're not going to want to miss it. I will be back next week with a brand new one for you guys. And until then, stay safe. Bye guys. Bye guys.